everybody. Welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Pick Shows. This is for the Truck Series. I'm your host, MegaRuler31. Thanks for all the well wishes last week. I'm feeling much better. Sorry there was no cup video yesterday. I'll explain what happened uh, for the cup video tomorrow, but I just limited time. I just want to get through this today. So here's the situation. I'm recording this at about 9.30 Eastern Time Saturday morning. Uh, the truck race, it's Bristol, it's dirt. Uh, everything has rained out yesterday. It's going to rain throughout today. Hopefully they can get the track up and ready and good to run so that they can get the race in tonight. So we have seen absolutely nothing. We have seen, um, not how the track is this year. Cause the first year it, it rained like this, it was mud fest qualifying was a complete disaster or not qualifying, but practice was a disaster. Trucks are getting stuck in, in the mud, mud in the grills, mud in the windshield and, and the track was like really hard. It didn't really race like dirt. Last year, they had really good conditions and it was actually a decent race. This year, I think we're back more to like the 2021 conditions where we don't know what to expect. The trucks have no practice. So we could see mechanical breakdowns. It, it could be just an absolute disaster. So proceed with caution with this. Um, and the point of this video too is like I'm not going to have time, unfortunately, to make a video in between when the heat races are done. Think it's the same concept of when we did the clash, so it's going to be impossible to, you know, in the time frame to get everything and to like get a video broken down and stuff. So I went through and I looked at, and, and at least with truck, we we've, we've got a good four sample size um, thing plus um, some Eldora races. On, on dirt so we have bristol 22 and bristol 21 i, I lean more on 22 than 21 because again the track conditions were more like dirt then but uh, maybe i should be leaning more on 21 because the conditions might be more like that for um this time but knoxville they ran there in 22 and i apologize this one here should be 21 so we've got um out in iowa and they had or midwest wherever it was another short uh dirt track that the trucks ran in like june or july to like two summers in a row i don't think they're scheduled to do it this year but um but it, it, it gives us a, a sample size so some information and then there's some of these guys that are ringers i look back at so uh, i just like i put together some formulas with like short track the principles of dirt like some tracks that have had conditions that kind of responded like dirt with like tire wear and things like that just to try to cook up like so this is a speculation video. So I'm I'm sorry these projection stuff are not accurate. This is not the starting lineup or anything like that. I'm just trying to see potentially how things could land. And I think I don't even have any plays up there, as you can see. So I'm sorry I don't have the prime plays or, or things like that. But um here's what I, I'm going to try to attempt to do because you know I really am very thankful for all you who watch these videos and um you know support us here at fsi and our nascar program that i will try tonight as soon as qualifying and stuff to at least post um you know my three prime plays and maybe a couple other thoughts and value plays in the comments to the video so um let me check and see what time like I think we're 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 working probably with a moving target here too because I think they have a set time for when the like race is tonight, but I don't know if that necessarily is going to come to fruition depending on the track. Okay, so they have it listed at like eight p.m. So check back at seven thirty p.m. tonight, and hopefully if everything's like qualifying and and the heats and everything is done, I will throw some some thoughts in here and you know you can always sign up for fsidf.com i'll have the um dfs informations in the uh bio there it's super cheap it's like five bucks for the week uh so you know you'll be able to get like there i'll be able to like get the sheet like um posted and and the plays in quick and, and get that up for our subscribers but anyways, for you video viewers, I just at least want to get you some prime plays and a couple notes to go by for just as a thank you for watching this. So let's get into this. So uh, by like all the metrics, Stuart Friesen is probably, okay, sorry, color coding here. Uh, the blues, same, similar if you watch these videos to road course races, they are better than average on dirt. Um, actually, some of these guys are, are, are pretty good on dirt. So I, I call them like highly proficient on dirt. The yellows, I don't know if 
I tried, I scoured, I, I, I looked, I couldn't really find much information that they've ever driven on dirt in, um, you know, um, in like a racing profession thing. Like maybe they have a background experience and stuff. I, I, I do not know. They're mostly rookies and, and younger drivers. So it's, it's not a red, like fade them, but it's proceed with caution. The um, brown ones, just like a road course, are the ringers ones that have dirt experience, but then you have two things. So they might be great dirt dry drivers, but can they do it in a truck? You know, because they're used to driving in like a different vehicle. So some of them, maybe it will come naturally and they'll be able to pick it up right away. Other ones don't know. The other unique thing about these things is two of the trucks, Gordon, Gordon here and uh, Bowman, and, you know, we'll get to them. I'll go a little bit more depth. They um, both are in the glory to God trucks. Who's only been running one, but um, they do have the charters. So I, it's the speculation is, is did they pick up the glory to God trucks, which are leftover Kyle Bush trucks, but really have not been fast or um, mechanically sound, even though they were former KBM trucks. So they were built with like the maintenance of them and, setup and stuff on them haven't been great or did these guys just pay and we've seen this happen before where people have gone to like bj mcleod especially in the xfinity series if they want to see like a unique track and get some experience on it and then it's like a stuart haas basing or it's like you know uh, like it's another small team it's like a hendrix based um so the the trucks are customly built for these drivers so not sure um carrick in the on point in the Davenport and the Spire, I believe Byron ran that one last year, or maybe it was Elliot. Somebody, somebody um ran that truck last year and, and did pretty good here. So uh, I, I think there are more more sounds. So so there's lots and lots of questions. So going up top, Stuart Friesen is obviously like has the most history on under you know two races here. His average finish is eleven point five. And before I go, one other thing, um, just one more ground thing. 150 laps here there it's going to be the same thing as um last week where we had the truck race where there's going to be no live pitting because they're just going to stop the race at um the stage breaks or when they decide to have like pit and everybody's going to service their trucks and then they're going to send them back out again and unless you have like a visually visibly like down tire or like a, an issue you're not allowed just to go like get fuel and tires whenever you want to um it's just for the safety and just because of of the nature of of the race so expect a lot of caution so out of like the 150 laps i believe that they have here I think there was like anywhere from like 40 to 60 of them sometimes in these dirt races. If I look through like the four of them, there were caution laps because like caution, breed caution, like, and, and if you watch the clash and I think, you know, like go back and watch the, you know, if you want to watch these dirt races, that's fine. But just watch like after, um, you know, they're making fun of like Wiz Khalifa went out and did like the halftime show that they had the clash. And, you know, one of his hit songs is black and yellow. And it was kind of funny because like somebody commented on Twitter that it was like, you know, spin and yellow, spin and yellow, spin and yellow. Um, right after that, because they got all clumped up and they'd start and no, they wouldn't be able to separate enough. And it like one would spin and our out and it'd be a traffic jam. And then they had to like rack them back up again and, and go three, four more laps. And there'd be a another one and it was just getting to be surreal and, and sometimes these races can be like this and towards the end so even though you have a decent amount of laps here and for fast laps and stuff a lot of them could be under caution so you might not be like a ton of points for for leading so i don't know if we really need dominators here and if you know what you're doing and something happened in like the heat and somebody like got spun out or something and they end up at the bottom, then they're obviously going to be chalk. They're going to be able to get through the field. They know what they're doing. So, you know, look at, you know, the blue names, write them down or just come back to the video for reference. Those are the ones if you see, you know, some of these guys like starting like in the back and you see from like the notes or something that they had an issue during the heat race, then that's what's really going to help um make them like a really good play otherwise i think i'm just going to look at pretty much guys up towards the top because the ones that know what they're doing seem to get up there and to to stay up there and um 
you know, it just seemed to be, uh, that's how it goes. And I was, so Friesen obviously projects the best, um, you know, he's got a, a long history in this time of Jeske, I don't have him as a blue, but I, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe putting it on there because I look at, at Bristol, his average running position was, um, you know, 6.6 in Knoxville, it was 7.4. So I think maybe I'll give him the honorary blue hair after, because I, I pre pre-show, I was, I was thinking a little bit more about this. He didn't finish great in his one race here is 21st, but it, but I think he has some bad luck there. I think somebody else took him out. So I think Ty Majeski is a strong play here. And I think if people are looking at just like finishing position and they're not looking at average running position, that's a huge mistake. And they could really maybe be caught napping here. And the, here's the other thing, too. He's a Thor Sports teammate of Ben Rhodes. Ben Rhodes absolutely dominated this race last year. Did really, really well. Just like got had some setbacks at some points and just cut right through the field and was so dominant so if i have to like name like one prime play in this video here i don't care where he qualifies unless his truck looks like gets severely damaged or something during the heat races i believe that ben rhodes is probably the best play on the board here Josevar, very good also. I think he gets knocked down a little bit because he, the first Bristol race, um, didn't really work out super well for him. But let's see with my formulas here. If I take away this 28.5, that makes him the second highest scoring projected driver here. So Josevar is another one that I, I really, really like here. And then you have Joey Logano. Joey Logano did really well here in the cup. He raced it last year in a truck. He finished second. So I know it's going to be hard to fit all these drivers in. And, but, you know, Rhodes is definitely a priority. Josevar and Majeski, if you start with those three, that's a good core. If you could get Logano in and then nail some of the value guys, then I think that's a great start to a lineup there. Parker Klingerman. Projects well up here. Um, six average finish in two of the races, one top five, two top ten. So another one to keep an keep an eye on. I don't know why he didn't get a blue stripe there. Um Crafton. See, it pays to watch through these videos because sometimes I, I notice a couple things that didn't get um in you know pre-editing fixed and uh, when I when I save the spreadsheet. So you're seeing live tuning and finger another good one um here two races seventh average finish uh average running position um you know eighth overall rank and then you have byron who's in a kbm truck probably one of the best kbm trucks the truck that um kyle usually drives the 51 so let's see um you know he's He's done decent. This, these are his cup numbers, so we'll see how it um, converts to a truck. I believe they're his, his cup numbers. Yeah, because there's no uh, runs in Knoxville. Of course, no truck guys went out there because it was like a standalone race, and all the cup um, guys were in, uh, I think, Atlanta or some other uh, city that time, not even close to, to, to do it. So uh, I think Byron's definitely from play, too. I think he'd probably be more of a GPP play. Um, you know, I think I'd rather take like Logano, who's actually driven the truck here in the Thor Sport truck, also, you know, with um, you know, Rhodes and Majeski. I think they had him set up well, and I think they just like real a lot of success. But I think Byron, uh, he's just like been on a hot streak here, and 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 I know people are gonna say, like, you know, their their team's usually cheating, so maybe that's why um, you know, Hendrick has come under a lot of ire from NASCAR for things, and maybe that's why they're so fast having a good season. But the talent's there, it's a very talented guy. So Matt De Benedetto, I don't know about this one. Um 35th overall, like if I subtracted some of the matrix out, that's he he should be better. That's why he ended up in the top 10 here. But I, I just look at his average running positions and I think it just should bump him back down um, 
to I I just I don't know this Rackley War truck has been better, but I, we've seen it break down periodically. So uh, Chase Briscoe, here's another good one in this A and M racing truck. Uh, Briscoe is really good at the style of racing. I uh, raced a truck here last year, top five, uh, finished fifth. So uh, another one to to consider to um, work in here. You know, a, a cup guy, good experience. Zane Smith is a good driver. He just hasn't had been as good on dirt. Um, and I know it's Zane Smith, you know, you're looking at it, at this and thinking like, well, an 8.5 overall finish. He said two top tens. Like, what more could you ask for, Mega? But I just look at the average running positions. And I think, um, you know, 13th and 11th and 15th, like he had one really good run at, at Knoxville. But I think it's two things with Zane Smith, and, and this is a good thing, and I'm not going to knock him for it. I think he's kind of like Bowman in in Cup, where he puts himself in a good position. He's not necessarily going to have the dominant truck. He's not the best driver out there on dirt, but I think he does enough not to lose it because, you know, he's always contending for a championship. And, and there's some guys that, frankly, go out there and, like, let's just get through this week, and then next week we're back on pavement, and, you know, we're, we're going to kind of resume the season. So I think their strategy is, like, don't do anything to lose it instead of trying to win. Zane Smith, uh, I think it's the same thing, but I think he's, you know, a bit more um, – aggressive and versus passive on that and i think he he puts himself in a situation to try to avoid the calamities in the rack kind of like a play track and then is able there at the end to rise up and, and get a good finish even though the, the truck was probably maybe anywhere from a 15th to 11th place truck it can end up anywhere from like a 7th to a 9th place truck and pick up like maybe five points placed at the end as um people crash and he's able to pass them and do be successful Davenport is a very good uh, dirt racer. Uh, late modern standout. He's known as Superman. So again, not much data on him when I did all the metrics and stuff and looked at, you know, trying to convert it to like what an average truck driver would rookie would would do on this and then put in his experience. I came to him be like 15th overall in like finish average. And, um, you know, price 8K isn't bad, so you just have to see how that fits in, uh, see how he does in the heats and qualifying. Haley Deegan, um, actually two decent finishes, two uh, um, top 20s for this, I believe. So uh, Thor Sports also, um, again, I think that kind of helps. I'm not saying she's a play here. That's why she's in white. But uh, just see how she does in practice and see how she does in qualifying. I think she's one that they've started to right the ship. I think they're starting to go in the right direction. A couple of decent finishes in the last couple of races. And I think this is a don't lose any ground um, race instead of uh, go for it and, and try to get the victory. I guess here, uh, one top five, one top ten. Um, obviously a top 10 if it was top five. So didn't race in, in 21 here in 22, uh, did okay. He's pretty decent on, um, so I think he'd be a GPP kind of, a um, a contrarian in play that's, uh, in play it's if, or, you know, 93 is still a little, little pricey. I I'd probably would like Lee Klingerman or, um, Crafton or, or Josefar over him for that. But, you know, if, it, if it's a great place differential play or something, then, you know, you might have to consider it. Colby Howard, one top uh, 12 here. Average running position. It's kind of like the Zane Smith thing, but he's definitely not as talented or as good as equipment as Zane Smith. So, you know, it looks like Knoxville is like 18th average running position, so 17th overall. So I, I think, you know, depending on where he starts, if he starts below 15th, I think he could be in play here at 6,200. So I watch him as a potential value because there's definitely looks like there's some floor here. Um, but if he starts above 15th, then I think that it, it might be more of a liability. Jake Garcia, again, has run some really good uh, 
truck races, but you know, really no no data on here. Um, it looks like so. I, I guess you know you have to check out the heat and qualifying anchor room. He, the only reason I have him is blue here is he's been horrible at Bristol. Horrible, 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 horrible. Two races, 35th average, but he's a good driver in a, in a decent equipment. And he, look at his numbers in Knoxville, like 14th average running position, 12th average running position. So I don't think it's the dirt and I don't think it's Bristol. I don't. I just think it might have just been bad luck in those. Like, you know, the first race, who knows? The second race, like, we saw some improvement. And then those summer races in Knoxville look really good. So I think he's got to be on your radar. And a 7,500, that's not bad. So, you know, that's why I gave him the blue tag as somebody to consider. See how the heats go. Um, definitely keep him on your radar. I'm Sanchez Holmes, all young drivers, really not um, a bunch of experience. Uh, Nicholas Sanchez, I did believe, ran Knoxville 26. I mean, he had an amazing race last week and, you know, unfortunately didn't uh, get uh, the victory at the end. But, you know, I think there's a lot of promise there. Will it translate on dirt? Again, we'll just have to watch and see. Tanner Gray, pretty average here. But again, look at his finishes, 14th compared to his average running position. Again, could be another one that kind of stays out of trouble, doesn't have the best truck, but is able to put himself in a position to have some decent victory, or not decent victories, but some decent finishing positions. So again, I think it's it's someone that, you know, to see where the starting position is, if it like make 14th like the the mark there so if again if he starts in the top 15 and if you if you looked really dominant in these these heat races and the truck looks really good and they look like they're dialed in then by all means play them but if it looks like he got lucky to get up there then you probably you know 14th is probably the ceiling there so you know um if he's above it he might lose some place differential but again you know, I think looking at his finishing position in, in two races, um, it looks like he goes out there. He's not going to have the most dominant truck, but he might be able at 7,100 to be someone to keep your eye on. Uh, Die, he, he's had some some issues. I don't I just really don't know what to do with him. So it's a, a watch and see. Dean Thompson, 116th place but um, didn't really look good at Knoxville. So again, I, I think, you know, some of these guys in white here, like really benefited from those that are going at it, like taking each other out and just being there and kind of like in a, you know, when Tate Fulgerman won Talladega, like sometimes you have these guys that just go out there and get um, lucky and end up with a good finish position. But if you look at the average running position, you know, again, so that's what we're just going to have to kind of sort out here is how does the truck look during these heats? Uh, Tanner Carrick on point motor. Um, this is my note here. Racing dirt since he was six. He's 21 now. He's won midgets. And I think he was part, he might have won one of the chili bowls or been on a team that won a, a chili bowl event. So uh, definitely some experience there. Another one you have to keep an eye on. 6,800, not bad, but again, how will the truck? Jessica Friesen always is just like so enticing because she has a lot of dirt experience. She's the wife of Stuart Friesen, but she's never um, qualified for Bristol. And she's, I don't believe, and when she has made it to the Knoxville race, she hasn't um, been able to uh really do well lots of wrecks and, and things actually I, I believe there's a really really horrendous wreck that she was in, in in one of the knoxville races but she was okay so luckily for that um but again i think if, if this is rained out that she doesn't doesn't make it here because some of these other like charters and stuff you you're probably they're probably gonna have like 38 trucks in this i believe so you're, you're looking at probably three that aren't going to make it and i fear that she might be one of them Honeycutt, same thing, watch and see. Purdy in a child, Kyle Bush truck. Um, again, another one of these ones where average 
finish is 15th, but average running position is in the 20s. So it's the same block of maybe I'll maybe I'll make these guys a different color just just so I can highlight the ones that you kind of need to um look out for. I don't like that color. Suggestion from the audience. Let's make them purple. Okay, so it was Purder you were talking about. We were talking about Tanner Gray. We were talking about Dean Thomas. So so these are the ones to um that their average running positions weren't um great during the race, but they ended up uh finishing really well. I think about this in his class of his own. So so these four here keep an eye on. Um, Parsons and Cruz, not much data on them. Um, so again, just got to watch and see on that. Timmy Hill ran one race, um, in Knoxville, it pretty much finished where he is. So if he starts in the thirties, then, you know, maybe there's about five place differential point. So, but he's not like one of the other guys that were able to get up into the top 20 after running in the, the mid twenties all day. Rayum, um, really don't trust the tuck in this truck. Tyler Carpenter, um, qualified for this by winning the dirt, the Gateway Dirt National 2001 title for West Virginia. He's a two time, uh, maybe that was another event, um, two time dirt champion. So, uh, he's decent. Also, but he just the nice truck. Um, he like he ran in Knoxville. That was the only one that I found, and it just wasn't a really great day. So I mean, I guess I can classify him as a ringer here. I don't know, um, but we've actually seen him come out, and maybe it's one off. And these trucks um, aren't as good as some of these other pieces of equipment that they could be in. So now we got to Andrew Gordon. Again, he's a uh, racist glory to God truck at least three races or been in three races. His average finish is 31st. So like it gets him a ringer, but I don't really think that he is. Um, I don't know if it's the equipment or if it's him. But I don't really see him as one that, um, should I think I must have that projection. It's probably about more about 11. So just, just based on what we've seen out of him, unless he comes out with and dominates again in, um, this when we're looking at, um, you know, the heat races there. So Chris Wright, not really interested in Jerry Bolham. I think out of the glory to God trucks, he's one, he's a late model racer and main Marine construction repair business owner from Florida who mainly completes at five flags, which is a dirt track down there. But I think, you know, looking at some of the articles that have been out there that people have written about like these guys that are coming into the dirt. I think Davenport's definitely the head of class. And then, um Carrick would be second and I think Bowman would be third then Carpenter and then Gordon if that's um the order if we're looking at these dirt proficient guys but again I don't know if he's doing a truck on here I don't know what kind of glory to God truck will show up for this so I think it's risky I think it's a great GPP play um at 5600 but you know if you need a punt and you land on him and he's the last man in your cash lineup then why not you know, again, I don't really know if you can play cash in this. It's going to be hard uh, be just because it's almost like a plate track. So just play light, just play enough just to keep yourself amused and to have like a good night and have some skin in the game. But just don't go too wild. Down the bottom here, Lala Salen, Spencer Boyd. Again, they finished the races at least. Mason Massey. In gray, no experience. And Norm Benning, like he's raced like in Bristol before. I think he's done Eldora. Like he wants to be a racer, but I believe the dude's like 71 years old. Um, so like I, again, I just don't know how proficient he's gonna be here. I don't even know. He probably it's his own team, so 
You know, I don't think he has enough points to stow to qualify if qualifying get or if the heats get rained out and they go by like some formula or something like that. Um, just to have the race. Uh, you know, you, you think they would have to have the heats, but I, I don't know if he can get in on like provisionals or anything like that if if they even go that far. So just wanted to um to make that clear that I don't think Norm Benning is a, a play at all, even though he's like the cheapest guy on the board here. So again, thanks for watching. I know it's a lot of speculation, but just you know, I just 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 to keep a snapshot in your mind here. The blue guys are the guys or the people. Besides, maybe probably Jessica Friesen um, are the ones that you really want to focus in on, and then the yellow ones are the ones you really want to see how they like do in the heat races because we don't have much on them. And then I think you have some if if you keep looking at these like um, purple fuchsia ones here, they're pretty decent mid range price guys like Howard sixty two, Tanner Grace. Um, 71 dean thomas 61 chase pretty a little bit more expensive they're all should be in decent equipment like you know tricon garage a kbm truck and even the cr7 truck even though it's a smaller program seems to hold up well you know these are ones to see how they perform and to think you know okay maybe maybe they're going to run in like the 20s but they can keep it clean and be able to go in so again Appreciate you watching the video. I'll try to do the same thing for the cup. Maybe we'll get some practice or something in. Um, but, you know, I'll try to do it. It'll be a little bit easier. There's hardly any ringers in, in cup. And I think from, you know, we have a little bit less data because we don't have Knoxville to look at. So, you know, and we'll just look at the last two years and, and try to talk through it just like this. Hopefully it helps you. And, you know, again, when uh, Saturday night comes tonight and everything goes through, you know, everything could be completely different. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Hit me up at mygrower 31 on Twitter. If the video helps you at all. Um, you know, please like, subscribe to our channel so you know when these videos come out and uh, share with your friends. So look forward to seeing you for the cup video. And um, next week, I haven't even had time to look and see where they're racing, but uh, I don't, trucks will probably be off. It'll probably just be Xfinity and cup. But uh, we should be back to like something more normal. So appreciate your time and watching. Have a safe week, Easter weekend. Um, I'll see you next time.